All right, hello and welcome to another episode of All Things Real Estate. As always, I am your host, Kyle Sebeth with Century 21 Real Estate located here in Seekonk, Massachusetts, serving Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Today, unlike any other episode, we have some guests. We've got some special guests. They <laughs> flew in all the way <laughs> from Connecticut. I'm going to let them introduce yourself. It's not the Jackson 3. It is, <laughs> no, it is none other than my boys from Connecticut. What's your name, sir? Omar Montalvo. You, sir? Eric Souza. Dan Bergio. And you guys are part of what? What's the name of the group? We're with the Bergio Souza Group out of uh, West William Hartford, Ravis, William West Ravis Hartford. Real Estate. Yeah. So William Ravis is the, is the shingle. Yep. And then you guys are a group in, within William Ravis? Within William Ravis, yes. Where yep. are you located? West Hartford, Connecticut. West okay. Hartford, Connecticut. So I'm not a big map guy. Yep. Right? So we are centrally located right in the center of West Hartford. Hartford, um, West Hartford border each other, obviously. And uh, we're right in the center of the state. 10, 15 minutes out of Hartford. So from Rhode Island, how far? Um, about an hour from the border. New York? New York, another hour, 15 or so. So you're pretty much centrally We're located. Right you're right between in the New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Boston, Boston. An hour and a half, two hours to New York, two hours to Boston. We're about an hour to the shore. So nice. we do a lot of business on shoreline, yep. <clears throat> All right, first question. Why do people move to that area? What's the draw? Like, what's the draw of your, like, what's the draw of people either? Are, there, are you seeing more yeah. and more people migrate there? Are you seeing more people just trade up, people that live there forever? Yeah. What, kind of, what kind of area is So it's funny you ask, because right now we're seeing people kind of come into Connecticut, and what we're seeing is, um, you know, individuals who have either gone to school in, like, you know, New York or Boston, these larger cities, and now they're home because of, you know, COVID and they're home working from home. They're thinking, why am I paying this rent here in these cities? Why don't I go back to where I came from, back closer to family, back into Connecticut? So right now we're seeing this influx of buyers, and a lot of it has to do with low, low inventory, but I think that people are starting to come back to Connecticut. It's a centrally located state. We've got uh, a whole lot to offer. The shoreline is close, and you're close to these big major yeah. cities. A lot, of, a lot of New Jersey, a lot of New Yorkers move into Connecticut. So with the COVID <clears throat> kind of crunch, right, or the yeah. push there out of the metropolitan cities, are you seeing uh, a huge influx of people coming out your way? Or are you, is it big difference last year and this year versus five years ago? Well, especially down Definitely. in the Fairfield County area, it's just going crazy. I really? Mean, that market yep. is insane. And um, people are definitely leaving those metropolitan areas, heading, heading to, um, to those suburbs. So, a lot more yeah, investors, absolutely. too, coming out of New York. Really? Yeah. Yep. So yep. If, I'm, if I'm an investor, right, and I can tell you this uh, from our area, I'll go over our area in a minute, but if I'm an investor... And I'm looking to buy a two unit, right? So that's two units, whether it's side by each or up and down, whatever that sure. looks like, a box, right? You guys understand it. Sure. What am I paying for an average, let's say average condition two unit? So you're, depending on the Depends town, on the town sure. uh, like a West Hartford, you're, you're going to be spending quite a bit more. Um, you're, you're probably looking at 400, but in areas like Hartford, New Britain, like a Manchester, outside of uh, the, the West Hartford area, you're probably in the two fifty to $300,000 range. I just sold one for two ninety in a decent area in New Britain. So would you say three hundred is fair? Yeah. $300 yeah. For like a nice your, one. For sure. a nice one. Yeah. For a good one. Yep. Three family. Three family, you're roughly in the three fifty dollars range. Mm -hmm. push for a really a nice one that. in New Britain, around... 300 280 for moderate condition. Yeah, and then West Hartford, you're probably pushing close to 500,000. Really? Yeah. 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 So, rents, what do we got? Two bed. West Hartford, two bedroom, you're looking at about 1,700, 1,600, 1,700. Yeah, uh, in New Britain, two bedrooms, you're probably looking at more like 12, 1,300. So, those numbers work pretty well. They do work very well, and that's what's appealing to these New York investors. Those, numbers, up are, and say, those numbers are better than Rhode Island. These look really? fantastic. Yeah, that's why we're getting a lot of activity. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yeah. So a three bedroom anywhere close to 1,700? So I'm getting a, in a three bedroom apartment right now, uh, 1,400 in New Britain, which isn't nearly as appealing as let's say a West Hartford. Um, and I'm getting 1,400 for a nice clean three bedroom apartment. If you're looking at a three bedroom in West Hartford, you're pushing 2,000. That's really interesting. Yep, yeah. Um, single families, what are they rent for? Do they rent? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're probably... Depends roughly, if it's a two-bedroom, three-bedroom. Three-bedroom, one-bath ranch. <clears> what am I getting? bucks a square foot is the Decent general Decent area, you can rate. get close to $2,000 for a three-bedroom Easily. Three-bed, yeah. 2000 yeah. That's That's crazy. Yeah. So, obviously, here, locally, Rhode Island, southeastern Massachusetts, we're seeing a very, very tight inventory crunch. 
right? Inventory is at all time lows. I've never terrible. seen it this terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see in there? Same thing? Same thing. Um, we're seeing, <laughs> you know, these hot properties are seeing people lining up at the door. There was a listing in South Windsor and this, uh, uh, some, another agent in South Windsor had a listing, had 80 showings in two days and something like 15 or something yeah. offers. So, so that's how you know it's even more frustrating. It's like when you can sit here and recite the, the address or so recite the, the listing. Like, remember, think five years ago. How long have I been doing this? 12 years. So think five years ago, right? You had no idea all the, the listings that were on the, right? There's no possible way. You knew all the, all the addresses and all the houses. Yeah. And when the buyer said, oh, I know that, you know, you weren't like, oh, I know that one. Sure. sure. Like, we need to get back to that, right? Would you agree that, like, to make this a healthy market, we need to get back to some level of normalcy in the sense of listings. I think that with months of supply being down to around two months, there's no way that that's a healthy market. I think a healthy market is what, four to six four months, to six. right? Anything above that, that's not a healthy market. So right. I really don't think we're in a healthy market and a lot of buyers are, are struggling right yeah. now. Very, getting very frustrating. Cash yeah. buyers where it used to give you a discount, now you're, you're lucky if you get it at asking price with cash. Right. Finance yeah. deal, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 over asking. Right, and to your point, I want you to explain something because a lot of this show is to, to educate people. Sure. So when you say two months of inventory, can you explain that to me like I'm 10 years old? Of course, Thank so you. if you have a town, let's call it, uh, what town are we in here? Seacon. <laughs> Seacon, so if you have two months of supply in Seacon, that means that in two months, all of that inventory is going to be sold. It'll be gone. There'll be no more listings on the market after two months. And that's just not a healthy market. Mm -hmm. So four months means that you have four months worth of inventory. Four months worth of so inventory. So the thought is today, if no other houses go on the market yes. in May, there's nothing left. There'll be no listings. Except the one house that no one wants. There's always that there's one always house that, just, one, yeah. that just sits there. Um, so what do you say to what do you say to your clients? Like what are you saying to what do you first of all what are you saying to sellers that are like ah I don't know maybe like I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, so we're with Ravis. Yeah. Um, one, it's always great to have a backup plan. Listen, if you could sell now, take advantage of the market and have a place to go. Whether you know you have rentals yourself, or maybe you can move in with mom and dad for a little while. Something as a backup plan, great, you can take advantage of the market. Uh, but that's our big challenge right now is, hey, we, we all want to take advantage of the market. We want to list, but where are we going to go? Where we go? So, you know, with William Ravis, we do have a product called Ravis Purchase. Well, Ravis will actually purchase your home, free up your equity, and allow you to buy that next home non-contingent. Uh, so so where do they go? So well, that doesn't well, that's they're bidding point. on another that's, home. That's the, yeah, they're bidding on other homes, which is very challenging. You so know? no, but a, where do they go? We have so, a 64 unit building that we represent. It's a rental luxury apartment. What we're doing now for the lot of our there. clients yeah, is yeah, put smart. them in there. That's yeah. actually so smart. actually I just showed it yesterday to a nice young couple with a kid want to sell their house, their first time home that they just bought a few years ago. They want to take advantage of the market. They want to buy something else. Can't find a thing tough. They need to sell in order to buy. Guys, come take a look at this rental. Hang your hat here for a year. Let the market cool. Hopefully it does. And then you can buy something sure. with the equity you've earned on your house. So let's talk about that Ravis purchase program. Yeah. I need to sell. Yep. I'm just going to play devil's advocate. You have to have equity in your home. Of course. Yeah. Why on earth would I sell it to you when I could put it on the market and get a million bids? Well, they're going to pay you fair market value of the house. Mm -hmm. They're going to start off with 80% um, purchase. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get all of the proceeds when they when you're ready to sell because they'll they'll, so they'll purchase it's it. It's not on a buyer's timeline. It's on your own timeline. You you make your own call. You say, okay, I'm ready to sell now. I found a house. Yeah. Buy my house now. I'm ready. Because if these buy if these sellers can't find a house, so if that's searching, the catch. That's the that's so not the catch, but that's the that's, stick. That's the stick to it yes. because at the end of the day. It gives the buyer the ability to sell fast and not have to if deal with all to, the other stuff. Because if you, if they right. sell That's their house the, that, now that and, and the buyer says, "I got to close in 30 days," where am I going to go? That makes sense. And so, then if you have to, so I'm assuming there's no inspections, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. Yeah. But why would so if Ravis does that, right? As a as a company, there's got to be a discount there buying. Well, so, well there they, yeah, the, the, there's no free lunch, right? That's Correct. why they got yeah. Have, so they have so it typically costs them three percent. I don't understand that business model. And, and just to dig into this, because this is fascinating to me. So yeah. 3%, let's just say quick math, right? I, I have a $300,000 house. Well, no, a typical 5%, 6% listing, and then 3% on top of that. 
But all right, so yeah. that's fine. So yeah. it's eight percent. Let's say it's eight percent. So on a three hundred thousand dollar house, we're getting what's that? Eight percent of that's twenty four thousand. Yeah. So we're buying it for three seventy six. Yep. Okay. Or two seventy six. Two seventy six. Now, what is Ravers doing? Putting it back on the market? I think they're going to end up selling it. So obviously, the market is what it is. It's it's hot enough where they can turn around and probably put it back on the market and. Make a profit. Put it back on the market, um, earn their 3%, and all the extra proceeds go to that seller. Yeah. So Unlike the iBuyer program where the sellers take a big hit. Right. I'm just trying to understand it. No, I think it's a yeah. good program. I think it's interesting. I don't They're think just it's for trying everybody. To come out with a product that, you know. That competes. Competes in that in space. That, in and I think, the I, I think the iBuyer thing is going to go by the wayside. Sure. I think it's, 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 I think all this like virtual, what are your thoughts on like that tech People come in and buy the house without seeing it. Zillow's going to buy. I can't imagine that's going to take off. I just don't see that going too far. I, I mean, think this business is probably the most archaic business and will remain the most sure. archaic business for a long time because people don't do it that often. It's not sure. like a stock where you can trade in out of it. It's not a liquid asset. It's yeah. an illiquid asset that needs a lot. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's Real inspections. It's tangible. You yeah. know, it's, Correct. And you they want to work with people that they know and they trust. Correct. Somebody that can guide them through the process. And has a reputation. This is a, it's all based on reputation. Are you guys seeing a lot of people buying home sight unseen here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see people putting offers on sight unseen. I was going to say, those fall apart most yeah, often. They yeah, never, they never. They can't they, stick. They're hard to stick together. First of all, it's useless. You're yeah. just trying to lock it up. Like, I get sure. a lot of agents that put offers sight unseen. And I'm like, what are we, what are we really doing? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and listing agents that have been in the business a while are very hesitant on taking an offer that's sight unseen. I won't even at look at it. At least in our, our Yeah, area. I won't even look at it. Sight yeah. unseen offer is useless to me. Sure. So sure. you never see, you don't have no idea. Yeah, it's a crapshoot for sure, especially if you're getting all their offers. I mean, why would you take a sight unseen Except offer? unless you're the lazy agent who just is like, <laughs> I got a sight unseen offer, done, sold, sold, yeah, sold, yeah, we don't right. want to show it right. to Yeah, exactly. Right, but right. that's yeah. not doing your client any any type of service at all. Sure. Yeah. Um, right. So are you seeing any eye buying out there, Connecticut? Not really. I don't see any either. I don't really Where see Where are they much. doing it? I, you know, I, I, can't, I couldn't tell you. I'm guessing probably in uh, maybe California, maybe those. Yeah, I don't Silicon know. Valley, West Coast? over yeah, there, I'm the West Coast there. where it's techie. Yeah. Yeah. But I just don't see, I don't know about your market, but I don't see our market adhering to that anytime soon. We, no. have, we have a much different client base here. Think, how would you sell a three-family to an iBuyer? It's impossible. It's a disaster. It's, it's, sure. it's, it's hard gonna to be. It's, it's hard, hard to sell do three family to a single people. Person. That's what I'm saying. How are you going to do this? <laughs> it's, like, impossible. it's almost impossible yeah. to get the transaction to close with two realtors involved. Right. You think you're going to do this on a computer? Right. Are, you, are you out of your mind? I, I agree. Yeah. You're going to get 10? What? Yeah, like it's, unless they're getting it for 50% LTV or 40% LTV. It might be worth it. But then fine. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't matter. You just buy it and put it back on the market. Sure. Um, do you guys participate in any of that stuff? Any of the off-market transactions, any wholesale flip stuff? Um, not too, too much. I mean, we, we definitely look at off-market deals for our clients. We don't just focus on MLS and what's available. Mm -hmm. We try to dig into the market and see what's, you know, for sub by owner, or maybe there's somebody who, if we're going on our on our platforms like Remind, I don't know if you use Remind, it's a service where you can kind of look to see how long a seller has been oh, in yeah, place, yeah. how much equity they have, and what their percentage of possibly selling is, you know? So maybe we'll dig into those just to kind of be creative and give our buyers some opportunity. And in this market, how can you put together a lot of off-market deals when everybody wants to take advantage of the market I'm gonna itself? Tell you, I'm going to counter that. You will be shocked. Really? I probably do two a week. Oh, wow. Off-market off deals. Off-market deals. Okay. I have an example right now. I was going to say, let's, let's role play. How does let's that work? Let's role play. <laughs> Went and looked at a property in um, Warwick, Rhode Island. Small little town, city, whatever. Uh, property was the lady just had to get rid of it. She couldn't afford it anymore, had to get rid of it. Tried to list it on her own, listed it way too high. I offered her 100000 she took it. Wow. She took the 100000 we'll put in probably $20,000, we'll resell it for 200000 So maybe is COVID helping out with those things? People don't want people through their homes. I um, think there's always people that are unaware. In, I think people are always in a situation where they need to get out fast. And that will never change mm. because there's circumstances that happen that they need someone like myself to come in and purchase it cash so that they can move on with their lives. Yeah. And they don't owe anything. So a lot of times it's just getting out. I have another gentleman who um, in, in another town, property's probably worth 290. Um, I'm paying 225. It needs about 2,000 in work. 
So he just, older guy, just wants to get out of it, yeah. doesn't really care. He's like, just give me 225 and I'm, I'm going. Well, I had a similar situation. <clears throat> uh, it was a three family and a client had called me and said, hey, we want to sell our three family. And obviously the market for multifamilies in our area is booming much like it is here. I mean, you're getting, when you put something on the market, you're going to get showing after showing after showing. Mm -hmm. And you got tenants, you got to bother them, you got to run them through. It's a pain. So they just said, hey, here's a listing. Let us know if you have a buyer. We had a buyer, brought him over there. It was a cash buyer, fortunately for them. Gave them the number that they wanted. We're not disturbing the tenants 100 right. times a day. Sure. They just didn't want to deal with the headache. So right. in that case, that kind of worked out. Another one just like that. I'm paying 240 for it. Yep. Um, three units, probably worth 320. But when I'm not going to do an inspection. I'm not going to do an appraisal. Sure. It needs a roof. I'm not going to bother the tenants. Mm -hmm. And we can close whenever the guy. Make it look as appealing as you can. So so there's a, there's give take, right? Sure. So they get right. The seller is going to get some stuff they want. And then in return for that, they're going to sell it at somewhat of a discount. Yeah. Now, conventional wisdom would say, why would anyone do that when you can just put it's it on like the market? It's like the Wild West out there right mm -hmm. now. But why wouldn't just, they try? Yeah, why wouldn't you try? Right. But sure. I think some people just don't want people through their house. Yeah. Sometimes they're embarrassed. They don't want people to know. Um, they don't want people to even know they're in that situation. Yeah. Sometimes people live very not clean the cleanliness isn't there right so they don't want random people to think and tell people that their house is really dirty or whatever so sure. they just want to sell it quick so yeah. i think one thing for you guys maybe kind of look at that yeah, work on work on maybe getting someone i always say um man manufacture your own inventory sure right manufacture it from getting deals off the market that you can present to your investors, that you can then take to your investors. If they don't buy it, you guys can then buy it and turn it around and give it to your buyers. So there's so many different ways to manufacture inventory right now. Yeah. Um, I think it only gets stronger as the market dips. How do you connect with those sellers, typically, the off-market ones? Do you just send out your mailers or do you call? Or? Mailers, yep. pay-per-click, wholesalers, calls. Cool. Yeah. Those, four, those four things, those four legs of the table are the ways that you can connect with those folks. Nice, yeah. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it really makes for a, uh, it makes for when you do all four of those things, you're bound to just out of sheer will and desire and ability to kind of navigate, you'll get something. Yeah. You'll get deal. Here's the other thing. Remember this. Every deal that's not a buy could be a list. Sure. See what I'm saying? So if you're not a buyer sure. and yeah. they want retail, hey, we put that hat on. Yeah. Let's put the let's put the retail hat on. That yeah, would make interesting. sense. Interesting, yeah, makes sense. Right, it's a, it's it's a function of kind of looking at your business and seeing some things you can tweak around a little bit. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so what else? What else do you guys think about this market? When do you think the market changes? <sighs> I think it's going to be a while. I really do. What does I think that, look that like? we're just so overloaded with buyers right now that it's going to take a real spike in inventory to level things out, um, which I'm hoping it does. Uh, but we've been saying this for. Months now, hoping this inventory. Actually, is years. Spike. I yeah. mean, yeah. I, I mean, think we've been in an inventory crunch for two years. Yeah, two, right. three years. It's yeah, been yeah, a, last year inventory is pretty low compared to the years before. Yeah, for sure. We're seeing things starting to come on the market like we do everything every mm -hmm. spring, so mm -hmm. things are picking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, but who knows how long it's going to last? I think there's just too many buyers still. There's a lot, there's a lot of, buyers. of buyers. A lot yeah. of buyers. So even though that house comes on, yeah, yeah. it's not lat like you're not give. Nothing's getting a chance to actually like manifest. It's it's yeah. funny the days when I first started, it was you know I was young and you get a listing and you're like great I got a listing now I got to work this listing right and I got to go to the open houses right. I got to send up my mailers right. I got to go hang up door knockers. Now it's like you get a listing and it's a couple done. days it's you don't done. have to do anything. You barely have time to do all the marketing on it before. It's Your sold. marketing budgets almost went to zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we're the right off. I mean we still <laughs> hired professional photographers. Right. And, yeah, right. But we don't have time for the these stages anymore, and no. they're really we frankly not don't as, need it. Sorry, and the, on a, on the seller's end, <laughs> the seller doesn't need to do any anything. For the most part, a seller to get the house ready is just put it on the market. Yeah. It's like you're more important timing wise than yeah. it is getting it perfect. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. So you know we talked. To, a little bit earlier about buyers versus listings you know i've i've kind of been chasing the listings because mm -hmm. you know I, I there's a value in that everybody needs listings but you actually turned it around and said i think you chased the buy i think it's, the it's 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 locking down buyers yeah i think the game now is locking down building a great rolodex of buyers that trust you buyers that want to work with you, yeah. buyers that need your guidance. Well, we certainly have a Rolodex of buyers right and now. And spend the time with them and show them your worth and say, this is the guy I want to work with either now or six Or in the future, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So real quick, last 15 part. seconds, yeah. when's it going to change? Give me the timeline. Uh, about a year. You, sir. Year or two? You, sir. 
A year. Two years. Two years? Yeah, hopefully. Two years. Hopefully you're wrong, but I think I, I right. thought that this year was going to be a great year. We're behind. We're way behind. We're Same. two years behind. Yeah, we're a little bit behind. We're two springs. Think about it like this. We're two springs behind. We've missed two spring selling seasons. Yeah, it's crazy. This one's almost, this one's going to be a wash too. Yeah, but um, we're still here. Still gonna we're work still hard. here. We're going to keep How many more seconds we got? Two. Two go. seconds? <laughs> what do you got? Go. No, no. I, I, I want to talk very briefly about go. the Homes for Heroes program that yes, I talked to. Yes, go ahead. Go. Uh, so Dan and I are Homes for Heroes specialists. So we love helping and everybody that qualifies are police, firemen, corrections officers, uh, teachers, medical professionals. We're able to provide great benefits and discounts to those frontline workers. So um, it's a far-reaching pool, great program, great program. And we're getting a lot of leads and helping out a lot of uh, frontline workers. So one question for yeah. you. Do you guys wear capes when you go out there and do that? <laughs> Only when we make our phone calls. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hey, guys, thank you guys so much for another great episode of All Things Real Estate. Everyone have a great week. Bye. Thank you.